Alright, so in yesterday's video, we started talking a little bit about the end of year media availabilities for the Vancouver Canucks, but we centered most of our focus around Elias Pettersson and what he said in his segment. Today, I wanted to shift focus towards another player, and he's perhaps the biggest free agent that the Vancouver Canucks have on their hands this offseason defenseman Philip Hronik. And whether or not you do think Philip Hronik is the best Canucks free agent or not, he is definitely the one asking for the most money, and that is a problem. To give just a little bit of context here, Philip Hronik had a great first half of the season alongside his partner Quinn Hughes, and it was really looking like after so many years of trying, the Canucks had finally found a permanent partner for Quinn Hughes to play with going forward. However, in the second half of the season, Hronik's numbers dropped by a very large margin, and it was quite noticeable. He's known for having a huge shot, he wasn't using it, some of his passes were off the mark in the offensive zone, he was struggling to keep the puck into the offensive zone as well on the second power play unit, and defensively, he was being a little bit more irresponsible, led to a couple of key goals, including Evan Bouchard's game-winning goal back in Game 4 of the Oilers series. So the sudden drop-off had a lot of people wondering if Philip Pronik was injured and just pushing through to be able to play through the playoffs and the end of the regular season. When asked about it by Jeff Patterson the other day, Philip Pronik said no, but he wasn't exactly too pleased at the question when Jeff Patterson kept nagging on trying to get an answer out of him. Were you playing through an injury? No. And well, what do you want me to say? So, you know, say what you want about the question and the way it was answered by Philip Ronick. Like, on one hand, yes, Philip Ronick maybe could have shown a little bit less attitude when actually answering the question, but if you put yourself in Ronick's shoes for a second, you start to empathize with him and realize that it really wasn't the smartest of questions that was asked either. Because Jeff basically asked if it was an injury that was holding back Philip Ronick's production in the second half of the season, Ronick says no. And that's a fair question to ask, but then he pushed it a little bit further, which clearly aggravated Philip Ronick, because in reality, there was nothing holding him back. He didn't know why he was playing so bad, there was no excuse for it, and I'm sure that's frustrating for him in itself, so to talk about that, I guess he didn't feel was necessary, but I don't know, let me know your thoughts on the question and the answer, whose side you're on, who's at fault, all of that stuff. But that leads me right into the next part of this video, if Philip Ronick really wasn't playing with an injury, and clearly he wasn't, then there is no way you can justify paying him $8 million, which is what he reportedly wants, and if he isn't willing to budge in negotiation talks, then it might be time to move on and trade Philip Ronick, because he is an RFA, so we would be getting quite a lot back in return for him. The way I see it, Quinn Hughes making 7.8, you can't be paying Philip Ronick more than Quinn Hughes, especially when at the start of the year, Quinn was carrying that line. He was on a tear. He was the number one point producing defenseman in the NHL. Like if you stuck my grandmother there on the blue line alongside Quinn Hughes, then she probably could have cashed in like 15 points at least by the first half of the season. So not to take anything away from Ronick, he's a great defenseman and I would like to make something work if the number was right, but 8 million, no chance. But the thing is, even 7 million, I don't think I'd want to give it to him. It's a lot of money and I'd way rather just pay Zadorov a little bit less when he was a much more impactful playoff performer than Philip Ronick was. And if we're talking about his first half of the season, Philip Ronick, then his case for $8 million becomes a lot stronger. Not saying I'd still sign him for $8 million, but it becomes a lot stronger. But when you compare his first half to what we've seen a lot more recent in the second half and the playoffs with no injury, I would way rather prioritize Lindholm and Zadorov, trade Philip Ronick for like a top line winger, and then go use the rest of that money to get yourself another replacement defenseman who's cheaper like a Chris Tanev who could probably take a little bit of a hometown discount if he wanted to come back. So I don't know, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, everything about Philip Ronick from what he said in the press conference to what we should do with him in the offseason because he is definitely the biggest decision when it comes to pending UFAs and RFAs that the Vancouver Canucks have to deal with. But yeah, man, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you are new around here. We're almost at 10k. Let's hit it by the end of the playoffs. See you in the next one. Peace out and take care.